Hello and welcome to the Pros Racing Network live on air for race number one for the Pros IndyCar Series. Kicking off their season tonight here at the Auto Club Speedway, Fontana, California. It is the California 300. 300 miles between tonight's green flag and the checkered flag. 150 laps around this 2.0 mile D-shaped speedway. And as the drivers get set to hit the grid here and they get set going we're going to run you down through the starting order qualifying coming to a close and ryan borger is going to be on pole position in the number 32 jay anderson going to be starting in second gary bauer going to make up third at travis brown starting in fourth matt clifton going to occupy fifth spot ryan Eckstein going to be in sixth matt bukart is going to be in position number seven and Kerry Cleaver going to be starting in 8th, and he is the last car that is actually going to take a qualifying time uh, in, in tonight's event. Um, also, more drivers down the field. Ninth place, Robert O'Neill, Scott Brinson, 10th, 11th, Jim Smith, Michael Johnson, 12th, Verlis Falcons, 13th, but not currently on the racetrack. Brian Cross also being scored 14th. Those two drivers not on the grid. So 12 cars getting set to take the green flag. And before we get going, down there with Mario Andretti, the IndyCar two-seater, Trevin Valderrama going around on the pace laps. How you doing, Trevin? Oh, man, I'm doing great. This is this is just absolutely amazing to be out here on the track. Seeing how, how awesome this feels is just amazing. I, I'm expecting to see a great race through, through all these Indy cars. It's, it's going to be an awesome race. I know that the DW12 is one of your, your favorite cars on, on iRacing, and we're getting set to go racing down the back straightaway. The lights are off on top of the Ford First Mustang pace car getting set again 100 and 50 laps before we go green some quick facts about fontana speedway auto club speedway fontana california capacity crowd 84,000 people owned and operated by the international speedway corporation broke ground a recently new track back in 95 opened in 1997 has a rich indy car a little bit of history there and the track itself an asphalt surface two miles in length 14 degrees of banking but it is very wide there is a lot of room to spread out and get things going here and we are set pace car down to pit road ryan borges is going to be the control car here he's going to wait on it as he is in control of this field now he's on the gas the green flag flies and we are racing jay anderson going to be the car that started in second position not really the start that he was looking for An attempted move by one of those cars trying to look to the high side there looks like that 33 of travis brown's going to slide back in line now top four single file it out and we had a heat race here with the pros indy car series thursday night and that win went to travis brown he said he was able to stretch that 50 laps on field tonight's race 150 laps so if a couple of these drivers can work that draft they could attempt to make this race on a two-stop strategy but there is a long way to go before again tonight's affair is done the top four have already pulled away to 1.3 seconds of a lead ryan Eckstein and Mac Buchart, 5th and 6th, they are that second group. They sit about 1.3, 1.4 seconds back. And then Gary Cleaver, 7th and 8th position. Scott Brinson are the next group, 2.6, 2.7 seconds back. So field spreading out early here, giving each other a lot of room. But the battle is on up front. That's where that biggest pack is, those first four cars duking it out. One car right up next to the fence. That's going to be Ryan Borges, lap 2 already in the bag again this track is two miles in length and running lap times in the 32 second or lower range when you put that draft into effect there so very very fast but that draft is also very very strong and it is going to be the deciding factor in tonight's race you can pretty much put that car anywhere you want now when you go down into the corner it's not the smoothest you got a little bit of bumps you got to negotiate them but down that front stretch as they go right now to quarter number four you see travis brown take a look down to the apron there it's a white line so that is fair play down there and he's actually going to pull back up now against the fence but that front straightaway you can use that draft you can go six wide if you want to do it now i don't think that's really going to work out when you get back down to quarter number three but it is possible and now side by side for the lead again these dw12s just so exciting to watch and also very exciting to race but you always got to be up on the wheel you can never really settle into a groove here now again considering that they have really got spread out fairly quickly here on the drop of that initial green flag 
uh, the smaller packs of cars can kind of attest to that. Everybody back from the top four is single file for now and uh, possibly trying to draft there to catch back up to everybody. But up front, it is Jay Anderson who went to the lead there temporarily. And now Travis Brown going to go way up to the outside fence. Two rows of side by side, side by side for first and side by side for third. As it's going to be Ryan Borges goes down and clears the 07 of Matt Clifton. And still side by side up front, Jay Anderson on the bottom. And everybody else goes up to that fence. Ryan Borges right there working with Travis Brown up against that outside wall. Jay Anderson, however, will lead this lap and running very fast lap times. However, Ryan Eckstein, Matt Buchart starting to close in just a little bit. Fifth and sixth on the racetrack right now. Again, they were about 1.4 seconds back after that first lap was complete. Those two cars are minding their P's and Q's per se, riding single file on the racetrack right now. And because of that, they are catching up and have actually closed that gap into about 1.2 seconds between them and these top four cars. So still a long distance to go for those guys to catch back up at the rate that they are doing so, but definitely that single file strategy is slowly being able to inch them towards the front. And 12 cars took the grid, the 13th car that is on track, the 006 of Verlis Falcons, who actually started from pit row in the Skull Bandit machine. His number 006 sits in 13th position, 21 seconds back. Uh, so he obviously decided to start this one from the grid, take it a little bit easy. But again, the top four still having fun with it here in these opening laps. Jay Anderson takes lap eight. He has led the most laps so far in his number 18 machine. Travis Brown continues to ride second. His, his number 33 Chevy Park competition karting machine down the back straightaway uses that draft. And uh, there he goes, steps out of line. And Almost a reference point for these drivers are those seams in the racetrack. And you can see it right there where Travis Brown is kind of hugging that first seam of the racetrack. It kind of assists these drivers in knowing how to hold their line, which can mean that they'll, you know, get a little bit more brave, try to throw it into that hole there. And they really try to use those, and that really dictates what kind of lane they try to run. You see that 33 of Travis Brown and oh, one car. Oh, there's 07 of Matt Clifton, a big wiggle in one and two. He was on the bottom there, started to slide up, and knowing Travis Brown was there to get out of the gas. So he'll drop back to fourth, last car in that lead draft. Travis Brown will actually be able to hang on to second after he dropped back a little bit. Ryan Borges, that number 32 machine, likes that outside wall riding that high side down the front straightaway, lap 10 in the work. So this race going by very fast so far in these opening green flag stages. And again, with the field being so spread out, uh, the, the fact that that can attribute to some green flag racing and maybe a race green all the way, but of course pit stops, at least two of them, depending on what these drivers can do to stretch the fuel. If they wanted to make it a two-stop a two -stop strategy, rather, they would have to come in every 50 laps, 50 lap increments, which Travis Brown, who rides second right now, he was able to accomplish that and go uh, no fuel for the entire qualifier race, which was run on a Thursday night. Uh, but again, he rides second right now. That Nobody really looks like, besides the guys that are back in the pack trying to draft off of each other to catch up to our leaders, everybody up front is very spread out, and that top four-car pack has now turned into a five-car, and but it's going to be very soon a six-car pack because Ryan Eckstein has been able to catch up, and he's using the draft off of Matt Clifton down the front straightaway, and... Matt Buchart, who was in six, working with Eckstein not too long ago to try to catch up. He's actually sliding back just a little bit, just out of the grasps of, uh, of Eckstein's draft there. Eckstein is now right in the thick of things as Ryan Borges has a big wiggle there in corners number one and two and actually caught the fence with a 32 in the wall. These cars very arrow sensitive. Going to have to see how they are able to negotiate that. Uh, because that could cause some problems. But again, Borges went down to the inside and just slid all the way up till eventually getting into the fence there. So he continues to ride right now. He is back to sixth, and he has lost uh, th that lead draft of cars. He's now 2.1 seconds back. And uh, taking a look at his speeds, looks like he's running about four miles an hour off pace with Matt Buchart. Matt Buchart, who rides in fifth position now, has, uh, has lost that lead draft also. So the lead draft, which had just temporarily opened up the five, six cars back down to four, Ryan Eckstein going to be replacing Ryan Borges in that mix. Again, that 32 machine on Borges caught the fence at a quarter number two not too long ago.
So that's what has him back in that position. Michael Johnson is dropped off pace in 12th position. He's 11 seconds back. And again, Verlis Falcons continues to lose time to our leaders because being all by himself, he has nobody to help him. And we hear that that 006 had a little bit of a close call. Uh, nearly lost that thing in three and four. He continues to go around the racetrack, but sits only about six seconds in front of our leaders who continue to draft Jay Anderson, showing that he has been very dominant the 18 car. And this racetrack is very wide, so you want to get to a point in this race where you can just ride around a little bit. And as funny as that says and sounds with these DW12s being so racy, Matt Clifton looks to the outside to think about making a pass that allows Ryan Eckstein to slide in line but you got to be very disciplined to not just lose focus through these corners and try to arc it down low swing way high and the 18 of Jay Anderson appears to be pretty locked in so far in tonight's competition you see he just holds his own in that bottom lane nice and smooth Ryan Eckstein has a little bit of a bobble uh, and looks like Travis Brown with a bobble as well but the 18 of Jay Anderson right now uh, at least from our perspective appears to be the class of the field in his number 18, he was able to qualify in second. He had a 32.285 pole sitter, Ryan Borges, who once again got the fence, has now dropped back to eight. He qualified on pole with a 32.248. So four one hundredths of a second separated the top two. There are some big problems for that number 32 of Ryan Borges because he is now back to 10th position. And again, he's at least four miles an hour off pace. and. And Borges probably hoping for a caution here. These drivers do have three resets that they can use for information uh, from the drivers. So Borges, if he was able to get a caution here, would definitely be able to use what it is, get some fresh tires on that thing, get out and go with fuel as well. But the way it sits right now, almost halfway in, approaching the halfway point of what was going to be our first fuel run of uh, tonight's race, Jay Anderson continuing to lead, but he works lap 18 of 150 up at the front of the field. And, uh, again, all drivers trying to hit that lap number 50 mark if they want to make it on a two-stop strategy. Some of them I may believe that that might not be possible, may pit a little bit shy of the 50-lap point of being a three-stop strategy, but again, any cautions that we see would uh, throw a curveball and dictate any changes that would have to be made to anybody's fuel strategy on uh, this. Jay Anderson, again, continues to not even worry about these other cars. Right now, side-by-side -side for the lead, and that is Travis Brown on the outside lane, but Jay Anderson has not left that bottom groove, and he's seen cars step out and try to go high on him, and you see Travis Brown pulls back in line and gets a draft so quickly goes back to the outside lane but again Jay Anderson just sitting there riding that bottom lane Matt Clifton thinks about three wide down in the corner number one Jay Anderson continues to not block he doesn't sway his line depending on what the other cars are doing is just basically logging laps in that inside lane Travis Brown gets right up to the gearbox there down the back and now through corners number three and four again Matt Clifton the 07 rides the high side and it's Ryan Eckstein the fourth car in line these guys have set sail on the rest of the field 2.4 seconds back to Matt Bukart. Bukart was actually working with XC as those two cars were fifth and sixth trying to catch our initial four car draft at the start of this race but uh, unfortunately for Burkhart, Matt Burkhart uh, he lost touch with Eckstein's draft. Eckstein was able to grab on I think it was the 07 to Clifton uh, about lap 10 or so and that four machine just dropped all the way back. So Jay Anderson continuing to ride the inside, maybe a little bit more defensive driving, that time through three and four. Travis Brown, uh, his Chevrolet continues to ride the outside lane, and Matt Clifton tails those two in third. Clifton's going to make it side by side for position number two, and can't get it done. Travis Brown slides back up in front of him, and it's all a very developing situation. It's not... And it is it is a lot um, is a lot different also in comparison to a, a Gen 6 race or any sort of NASCAR stock car race at Daytona Talladega because the draft that if you have not driven these uh, these recently new DW12s here in the I Racing service the the draft on these things is all these cars are and I have not I mean these guys are going down to 219 is the lowest that Ryan Eckstein got that time through the corner. And down the front straightaway, well surpassing 
uh, 230 miles an hour right down there down that back and also the front stretch but these cars not a, a plate per se but you get up behind the guy in front of you and those, the way these machines are are set up punches such a big hole in the air and you can see it right there Clifton with a huge run he goes out to the outside but once he does so he is met with that wall of air he stalls out so he's got to get back in line, get a little bit more draft, and right there, that was well done. Gets back in line, he tries to use a little bit of run off the outside of corner number two, down the back straightaway. Verlis Falcons in the 006 machine is coming down pit road. The 006 is going to come into pit on lap number 23 uh, for his machine. So he obviously not anticipating to make it to the lap 50 mark, which would definitely have to uh, he would have to make if he wants to make this on a two-tire strategy Travis Brown loose again has to check up and again these three cars second through fourth Clifton Brown and Eckstein all shuffling jockeying for positions but Jay Anderson really hasn't taken uh, a part in any of that at all all race long just continues to mind his own business there down on that bottom lane and Continues to ride. You see Clifton once again takes a look to the outside. Travis Brown down and onto the gearbox of Anderson's Delara DW12 down into the corner. The only way you're going to get around Anderson right now, there you see the 006 of Verlis Falcons who just recently had him down pit road for his first green flag stop of the night. Done so rather successfully. Uh, Matt Clifton. Drops back to fourth and a big checkup for Ryan Eckstein. Eckstein uh, got up behind Anderson there in three and four. The checkup and right in front of Travis Brown. Uh, but it is not hard for these guys to catch back up. Uh, and it's hard to describe that situation also because there really isn't going to be a point at all where these guys are just going to sit and ride in line. It's always moving around because the draft is just too much to ignore. You can't let off and just kind of hang out behind that guy because the guy behind you is just going to get in that draft and blow your doors off and we're going to go side by side two rows deep for first and for third jay anderson once again is going to lead to that tie by travis brown is the challenger on the outside and then clifton and Eckstein side by side for third brown will slide in for second and clifton will win the battle for third for the time being but once again down the back, Travis Brown to the outside and nearly all the way to the fence down there. That could have been bad news for the driver of the number 33 as that got a little bit close here. Uh, so again, a very, very active and a very fluent situation up front. Update on the rest of the guys. Uh, Scott Brinson now sits in the number 5 spot in his number 14 machine. It looks like uh, recently being passed. Kerry Cleaver is going to be in 6th. The Matt Burkhart is seventh. Gary Bauer is eighth. And uh, Gary Bauer actually the start of a third pack. Him and Robert O'Neill about 5.4 seconds back. Um, got uh, Matt Burkhart, Kerry Cleaver, and Scott Brinson. That's a three car pack just about three seconds back uh, from that lead draft. But it comes down to the restart. And the restarts in these machines can be pretty crazy. 006 of Verlis Falcons back on pit road. Uh, he pitted on lap number 23. Uh, trying to see what service he came down pit road to receive. And it looks like he had some front end damage on his car. So back out once again. But that's going to put him four laps down uh, in, in this affair. And right now race leader Jay Anderson working lap number 31. So closing on on those green flag pit stops and it's going to be interesting to see if you have guys like Ryan Borges and Travis Brown maybe use a little bit of strategy and try to pit together. I know Ryan Borges is riding around Michael Johnson so Borges in 12th Michael Johnson in 11th are 16 seconds back but again Ryan Borges desperately needs this cycle to go through because he needs repairs done to the right side of his machine after catching the outside wall in the opening laps has dropped 16 seconds nearly half a second a lap uh, off pace with our race leaders but you got four guys in the top four and that is the lead draft do you see two of them come down together does everybody come down by themselves because once you get back out on track even without damage you don't have a, a drafting partner out there if you're a jim smith right now jim smith and the number 12 
sits in position number 10 all by himself. So not the same situation as Ryan Borges. Borges, again, is back, but he does have Michael Johnson, but he is also using a damaged machine. Jim Smith, with no help, is also going to be significantly off pace. A little bit of a move there. It looks like Ryan Eckstein slid up the racetrack a little bit and almost got into Travis Brown down the back straightaway. So we're going to have to see. Does anybody here in the top four try to reach out, communicate with each other, come down together? Because if you leave with another car, even if you're battling for a position and you step out of line and try to make the pass, or if you have some sort of a strategy in play where you draft up and pass him and then he will do the same to you, you're going to be moving faster than one of these cars that is out there all alone on the racetrack there so something to keep an eye on actually Matt Clifton has lost that lead draft the 07 machine looks like he is working a little bit of right side damage on uh, on his car not sure what that may have been from uh, but Matt Clifton machine definitely looking like a little bit of right side bodywork damage so maybe a similar situation to what we saw with Ryan Borges but it looks like the 07 uh, Clifton definitely made contact either with another car or that outside retaining wall. I'm going to have to think is the wall because top three is still running at full pace right now. Nobody else looks like they're working any bit of damage right here. Ryan Eckstein looks at a high side just as Travis Brown wanted to do so on him. That uh, could have been a little bit of a close call there in turns number three and four. Again, Jay Anderson, and, and I mean, such a dominating performance so far. You see, Eckstein tries to do something on the high side, can't get it done. Travis Brown slides in line behind Jay Anderson and gets right up. And actually, I mean, pushing that 18 down that back straightaway right up onto the gearbox. Uh, now a couple of drivers discussing their fueling strategy. Again, they would have to make it about 14 more laps this time by if they want to make this a two-stop strategy. That would obviously require a little bit of fuel saving. Now, with these cars, it is possible with such a, a strong draft that you can use. But at the same time, I mean, 50 laps is a long way. This track is two miles in length. So that's going to be going 100 miles on a fuel of... Uh, uh, can of fuel here, a tank full of fuel in these DW12s, but a couple cars on pit road. Jim Smith has decided to come down and get service done to his machine, so has Ryan Borges. So Borges is now going to be back up to top speed, so those drivers obviously not going to make it. So those two cars and everybody that we've seen so far are going to be pointing towards a, uh, a three-stop strategy. So they pit just shy of the 40-lap mark. That would set them up for another pit stop somewhere in the range of about lap 75 and then uh, anywhere between lap 110, 115 for those guys that have most recently pitted would get them set up for a three stop strategy as this race definitely does have a green flag look to it. Travis Brown a little slow there through one and two and Ryan Eckstein goes back to the inside so continuously swapping positions for number two and the number three spots. A little bit of a close call for uh, for Gary Bauer, the car behind him, Robert O'Neill. They all had to get low because the car in front of them that they were all trailing, that's Jim Smith's machine, got uh, sideways, had to get out of the gas, and that could have been easily an incident there. And quarter number two, they hang on, and everybody continues to go. Again, the 10 cars that are on the lead lap have yet to hit pit road, Borges, Smith, and Falcons come down pit road for service now we hear the 07 of Matt Clifton that car that was stuck in the middle that lost that lead draft uh, 2.4 seconds back he has announced that he's going to come down pit road yes he does gets on the binders at a corner number 4 uh, is able to slow it down in time Clifton and Jay Anderson race leader have come down pit road on lap 40 so again it looks like it is going to be a general consensus of a 3 stop strategy for all of these drivers here lap 40 when our leader comes down pit road so he could stretch it to lap 80 and then some of the range lap 120 that would set him up for a 30 lap shootout on that final tank of gas so three stop strategy is going to be the answer to the fuel question it appears in tonight's race everybody beginning to cycle down through pit road again Jay Anderson Matt Clifton 
down there as well. Travis Brown has cycled to the lead. He is all by himself, which is a concern that I expressed before these green flag pit stops started was the fact that if you do not come down with a partner, and we saw it, and it actually it ends up pretty strange that Jay Anderson comes down pit road. Matt Clifton, who was actually running in fourth position, was able to be so aggressive on exit. And now trouble, we hear that one car, Kerry Cleaver, uh, may have been hit. Caution flag is going to fly. Looks like Matt Burkhart um, got into Kerry Cleaver's machine, so the caution is going to fly for the four. So Matt Burkhart is around in corner number four. Also hearing that Verlis Falcons ended up in the fence as well. So two incidents at, uh, in similar times. Looks like the 07 of Matt Clifton pulled out of pit road right onto the racetrack in one and two, and Falcons goes high to avoid it, ends up in the fence. So both Verlis Falcons and the four of Matt Burkhart simultaneous spins, one in corner number four and one in corner number two at nearly identical times is uh, going to put us under the caution flying. That's going to get a couple of guys stuck some laps down. Eight cars on the lead lap. Jay Anderson, the dominant car in, in tonight's race, is the first car one lap down in ninth. Matt Clifton riding around in what is going to be position number 10. Ryan Borges also one lap down, and Jim Smith make the four cars one lap down again. Verlis Falcons. Not currently on the racetrack, most likely taking a tow or something back to pit road. His 006 machine again, already sitting four laps down before the incident, currently being scored five laps down. Went around there in the corner there. So Robert O'Neill, Matt Burkhart, Travis Brown is actually going to stay out here. So Robert O'Neill, Matt Burkhart down uh, pit road. The 33 of Travis Brown had already completed his stop and Going to work out very good for the 33. Travis Brown pitted as that caution flag came out. Uh, so he is able to get his service and actually remain on the lead lap. So a couple of lap cars here that will most likely be getting a, uh, a wave around. I know that Ryan Eckstein, Jay Anderson, Matt Clifton are currently being scored now at the tail end of the lead lap. Ryan Borges is going to be the only car stuck one lap down as the scoring shows at this moment. And working our first caution flag, if you're just tuning in on the Pros Racing Network, the inaugural California 300 here with the Pros IndyCar Series race number one, Fontana, California Auto Club Speedway. This 300-mile race, 150 laps, is on the board for tonight's race, and we are nearly one-third of the way through it, this two-mile D-shaped oval uh, playing host to tonight's race. Again, under the lights also, so making these uh, these cars get a little bit more grip, stick to the racetrack a little bit better. Temps not that high. Uh, the weather in the sim, partly cloudy, 65 degrees Fahrenheit, so rather lower temperatures. No wind at all, no wind and relative humidity of 55%. So the weather settings uh, that the pros officials put together for tonight's event, fairly tame. The scoring's going to cycle through this time by. We're going to get an update and see where everybody sits. In a pace car, lights do remain on. Robert O'Neill is still being... Actually, now it's going to cycle through. So Travis Brown is our lead, our lead lap car. In front of him, the guys are going to get wave around. So once we get the one to go, it is going to be Ryan Borges and Matt Clifton. Jim Smith, who has actually apparently lost a lap in this cycle. And Ryan Eckstein, going to be the drivers that will get a wave around. And they're not gaining a lap from that. Uh, they are technically considered, for Clifton, Eckstein, and Borges' uh, perspectives, they're actually considered the tail end of the lead lap because they are in front of our leader, Travis Brown, as they pay. So technically, Travis Brown's number 33 has not put them a lap down. So... Once the lights go up in a pace car, they will be raved back around to catch up in the field. Only driver that is going to remain one lap down is going to be Jim Smith. Jim Smith is going to be the only car one lap down, and cautions not appearing to be abundant in tonight's race. Again, working our first caution uh, that flew about the lap 40 point. 
but all these drivers are on a three-stop strategy, which means they only make at least two more trips down the pit road for fuel. Before it is all done here, Verlis Falcons appears to, again, still no longer be on the racetrack. Gary Bauer is, uh, is going to be given the black flag by race officials per that, uh, that incident there. Uh, Gary Bauer came through Pitt Road, and his black flags have been uh, resolved. So no black flags anymore for uh, for Gary Bauer. The officials clearing him of, of that. Bauer runs on the lead lap, and looks like he's going to bring his 27 machine town to top off uh, before we get back going. But the lights are off at a pace car, so x going to get his wave around. Matt Clifton, Ryan Borges uh, as well. Those guys going to go around the pace car along with Jim Smith. So Jim Smith is going to be 12th position. We're going to restart with 11 cars on the lead lap as they run. Again, Brian Cross is actually out on pit road in his number 78 machine, and he's being shown in 14th position, having a little bit of connection trouble there. 44 laps down was not in the sim at the uh, the drop of the initial green flag but with still over 100 laps to go if somebody wrecks out uh however they do have three resets but if somebody finds a lot of trouble quick he could pick up a spot or two but for all intents and purposes a 78 and his night is done so everybody else back around the field so jim smith is in 12 13th is verlis falcons falcons not currently on the racetrack we know that he was not satisfied with what happened there through corners number one and two after he got cut off and sent into the wall and he continues to uh, plead his case over the radio with the other drivers. Now uh, the drivers again discussing what went down but those were two simultaneous spins 40 laps of green flag racing and two spins within seconds of each other on polar opposite ends of the racetrack one incident down in two Another down in corner number four, heading onto the pit road. But pace car down. Travis Brown leads us back to the green flag. He leaves nearly immediately. Green flag flies. We are racing once again under the lights here at Auto Club Speedway. And how much of this group will stay packed together? Everybody spreads out a decent amount down the front stretch and down through corners number one and two. Travis Brown trying to pull the... A little bit of headway on the rest of this field. Second place is a Scott Brinson behind him, Robert O'Neill. As they run single file, second, third, and fourth. All bumper to bumper. Jay Anderson working a little bit of draft around the lap machine of Brian Cross. And again, Jay Anderson, if his number 18 can get back out front, he has been dominant. But he appears to be the cutoff car. Again, top four like it was at the start of the race. Top four are the ones that are able to pull away and create their own pack at the start of this, be able to get some ground on the rest of this field. Jay Anderson just ends up finding himself in fifth. So Jay Anderson sits 1.9 seconds back. And uh, the way that uh, we saw, or the lack of the way we saw the people catch up, as again, we saw guys, uh, there was a two car set, fifth and sixth, and a couple more cars ran single file for a fair amount of laps there at the uh, the start of this race that was done in attempt to catch up to our leaders it worked temporarily they were able to knock a couple tents off of it uh, but at the end of the day no nothing was to come of that so jay anderson for all intents and purposes stuck 1.9 seconds and with those leaders drafting and anderson working with the lap machine uh, leaders may actually put some more time on them Anderson able to pick up about half a tenth there. As uh, now he has help with Ryan Eckstein and Ryan Borges. So we got two Ryans working together. You have two Matts working relatively close. Matt Clifton and Matt Burkhart uh, back in the pack are rather close. Jim Smith has actually lost a second lap as he had a spin. The 12 of Jim Smith had a. Uh, Came down over the nose of the 07 of Matt Clifton. That was about two laps ago, lap 46. Jim Smith actually got spun there down that front stretch of grass. And uh, no caution being thrown from that as he was off of the racing surface. 
Uh, but evidently, when it is all said and done, hands up in the grass. Didn't get into the inside wall. There's a lot of room to try to hang on to that one, but he's able to do so somewhat effectively, but that does put him two laps down. And we have passed the one-third mark in tonight's race. A little bit of shuffling back in the pack. It looks like we had a little bit of 2-3 wide down into the corner between Scott Brinson and Kerry Cleaver through one and two. Those guys are all able to settle it out, and that is actually the tail end of this lead four-car draft, which is led by Travis Brown. And if that 33 car was watching those opening, uh, that opening 40 lap green flag stretch where Jay Anderson was dominant, he's not want to. He's not going to want to get racy, and it appears that he is doing so. He moves up a little bit down that back straightaway up to that second lane, back down to the bottom, entering three. But again, Jay Anderson was able to maintain a better spot just riding along that bottom lane than all the other guys were that were drafting and. Stepping out of line, tried to make a move. So it was actually the the first place car is not that easy to pass if uh, if he is just riding that bottom, and that appears to be the strategy that that's 33 of Travis Brown is going to want to stick with. Being the fact that if you just ride that bottom, it's hard to pass. So again, you, we we talk how strong the draft is. You see how much draft these guys can pick up they suck right up to the gearbox on that car in front of them but completing the pass for that number one spot is hard and the reason they can do it for second position you see Robert O'Neill ride second right now Kerry Cleaver in the 45 he's able to draft up to the 77 think about what he wants to do they, the reason they're able to do so they step out of line they can still use the draft of that 33 of Travis Brown you're a guy like Robert O'Neill who's trying to Hang on to that and actually take that number one spot. You can't. A big block there as Travis Brown goes way up the hill. Robert O'Neill is going to go to the bottom. That could have got real ugly down in the corner. And that's what happens when you get a little bit bored of riding that bottom. The 33 of Travis Brown went up high and opened up the door. Now Robert O'Neill is going to have the inside. So the inside is very hard to pass that leader because, again, you can suck right into the gearbox. You step it along. There is nothing left. Uh, you just hit that wall of air. So when it's all said and done, you just stall out. You got to get back in line, take another shot at it. You really don't get anywhere. Some cars that are making some progress. We have Jay Anderson again, dropped back to fifth. Pretty much called him done. Back 1.9 seconds. It is one and a half seconds. So four tenths he has chopped off with help. From the 32 of Ryan Borges. Those cars. For the most part, single file Borges in uh, an X Cow Racing number 32 machine. He trails Jay Anderson Anderson into the number 18 car. So they're making up some time. They actually kick off another two tenths of a second that time by. So these guys, fifth through seventh, it's a three car pack. Jay Anderson, Ryan Borges. Ryan Eckstein also in the mix is another machine there, but that is Brian Cross is number 78 who again sits 44 laps down to the competition. Verlis Falcons actually back out on track and uh, he's currently headed back down the pit road for some more service. Uh, but he is back on track, so that will bring us back to a situation where all 14 cars that were set to take this race that qualified and were on the grid all 14 of those cars currently in action on this track again the, the pros racing league the pros indie car series brought to you by bones racing sim garage bark competition karting name a few you're watching live on the pros racing network the inaugural california 300 Starting to close in on the halfway point this time by as Travis Brown is retaking the lead from Robert O'Neill is going to be 15 laps to that halfway point. But Jay Anderson, Ryan Borges, with help from Brian Cross, are catching our leaders. And this is a situation that I thought was going to be possible 
uh, when we saw guys and two set of cars, another car then set of three of them there at the start of this race that they should be able to get single file and uh, and just work together and make up time and it just didn't work out for those guys at the uh, the start of this race. However, these four have managed to figure that out. So, not sure what the difference maker is, but it is 1.2 seconds. Gary Bauer, Matt Clifton, the next set of cars behind that three car, three lead lap cars plus the Brian Cross machine. Next group of lead lappers is going to be Gary Bauer and Matt Clifton, eighth and ninth, 7.2 seconds back, respectively, each. They sit again, eighth and ninth on the racetrack, and they're obviously going to have to hope for a caution. If you're anybody from Gary Bauer, Matt Clifton, Matt Burkhart, Michael Johnson, and especially, uh, I mean, you can pretty much call Verlis Falcons is out of this race. He's 13 laps down. Brian Cross is well out of anything competitive 44 laps down but if you're a Jim Smith you still got a shot at it two laps down you just need a little bit of luck of uh, when you can see some caution flags fly maybe stay out get a wave around come down for service that next time by and you know you're one lap down but trying to get that job done that is Jim Smith's number 12 so they need a caution Bing Anderson Ryan Eckstein Ryan Borges and uh, and Gary Bauer Gary Bauer's in eighth, but Borges, Eckstein, and Anderson, those three lead lap cars have closed it in to 1.1 seconds. So they are catching our leaders at a fast rate. Travis Brown, again, was able to get back to the lead rather easily around Robert O'Neill's number 90, or rather 77. Uh, but again, Travis Brown and East Jeans to ride that bottom. And, and it's very easy to want to go way up next to that fence, to arc it down, to to swing way wide it's that bottom lane is almost a defensive line and we saw Travis he, he threw a, a pretty big block on um, on some of those guys that there. he threw a pretty big block on Robert O'Neill when he went up to the fence and that was Travis Brown he went up high down that front stretch 77 looked to the inside to 33 threw a block through nearly half that front straightaway and, uh, and evidently lost that lead but you just ride that bottom lane. It is not easy to pass. Uh, Travis Brown single-handedly. You see Scott Brinson tries it. Gets up side-by-side side with him at the strike. Travis Brown again still a 26 1,000th of a second lead. And right there back down into one. Travis Brown is just able to retain that position. So if you're going to want to make a pass, you're going to need some help. And you're going to need to set it up. You're going to need to get that going on a corner exit. And you're going to need to be able to have somebody out there to help you draft with if you want any shot at making that pass. Or you force an error from the 33. You uh, you, you encourage him to get a little bit of racy. And um, maybe get him out of his comfort zone, which appears to be that inside lane. A little bit of a close call back for position number five. Borges and Anderson make a little bit of contact. They're able to... Hang on, no harm, no foul. But again, it is the 14 of Scott Brinson trying, trying, trying again on the outside lane but to get his number 14. Driving the Marlboro car. Trying to get it around Travis Brown. Travis Brown again up front. But he just can't do it. I mean, the way the draft works, and, and again, we, we, we've been the horse is dead we keep beating the dead horse on this fact but the draft is what these cars are these cars are the draft but just the way you hit that wall up there when you step out of line especially at a track like Fontana where it is so wide there's so many different places that you can go uh, you, just, you just can't do anything about it Jay Anderson leading that second group charge has actually lost the 10th so that gap is back down to 1.2 seconds. 006, and now we got trouble. One car and trouble down the back straightaway. Caution flag is going to fly. Ryan Eckstein going to be going around, and caution is out. And it's going to be contact with the lap machine through corners number one and two. 
uh, Ryan Eckstein, who was riding in position number uh, seven or six there, that second group of cars, came down a little bit, tried to get a little bit of side draft on the lap machine, 44 laps down, 78 of Brian Cross on the bottom. Uh, I mean, they get side by side. Very hard to tell if there was definitive contact. The 78 camp of Brian Cross is saying that they did not receive a, a 0x from iRacing. And from the best that I can tell from the angles on my side, um, they get really, really close. Uh, but I don't see actually any contact. And it's a, it's a tough angle to look at. Um, but nonetheless, net code or, uh, or actual contact, uh, they got closer than they wanted to be, and there may have been a little bit of contact with one of those wings on the side of those cars uh, by that cockpit area. But they do get together since as they do, caution flag flies, and Travis Brown going to bring us down pit road on lap number 70. That means it's 80 laps. From this point on, Travis Brown, this could be a strategy call to win him this race and everybody else because nobody is going to make a crazy move and stay out. As um, everybody down pit road for service. Again, the 33 is the first one in. Let's see if he's going to be the first one out. His car gets jacked up and four tires, fuel, and out. Nice quick stop for Travis Brown. So... We're going to be restarting with less than 80 laps to go. We have seen our leaders make it 40 laps, so all should be good from here on one more stop. You're going to have to do that around the lap 111, I want to say 111, 114 range, but at that point. Uh, and again, cautions can dictate and change that strategy if anybody wants to come down and take any additional fuel if they deem that so necessary. But uh, again, this caution just happened to fly. And this is our second caution of the race, just happening to fly uh, at, at this point. One car is out in the fence. Burless Falcons, 13 laps uh, down, turns uh, dead left and actually makes contact with our race leader, Travis Brown. Not sure uh, what uh, what happened there on the onboard with the 006. Looks like he uh, it doesn't look like he the, the car got sideways. Looks like he just turned it dead left. A little bit bored under caution, trying to scrub the tires, and I mean nearly turned directly into the uh, the gearbox of Travis Brown's machine. And hearing that the 33 camp has received a 4x for car contact. Now, uh, obviously, Pro's League uh, and his host racing not going towards the driver's SR safety rating, but that does mean that the sim registered contact. And take a look at the back of that 33 here under yellow. Don't see any damage. And the other drivers, Scott Brinson, relaying the information that they don't really see anything visible. I don't see anything on our end of things. As we pace here, the lights on the pace car remain on at this extent in the race. So we're going to try to take a moment here as we need to work under the caution flag to talk to one of our drivers. And uh, we'll try to get a, uh, a word real quick with our in-race reporter who currently sits in the number one position that is the 33 of travis brown and travis brown up in the number one spot our in race reporter we got him on the radio here uh, you liking that clean air out front there on the bottom oh yeah i'm gonna love it is that gonna be the way that you pr protect that spot we saw that earlier with jay anderson in the number 18 car where you just kind of ride that bottom. These guys can step at a line. They can get side by side, but they can't complete the pass. So if you're able to hang on to the lead out of these restarts, is that going to be the key to holding that number one spot? Uh, yeah, I believe so. And uh, you, you guys pitted here just shy of 80 laps to go. So that's going to be about one more stop for you guys? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Probably a one-stop race from here. 
Yeah, I believe so. It depends on how cautions fall when we pit, but I think everybody's guaranteed at least one pit stop here. Moving forward as we close in on the halfway point uh, in tonight's race, you've had an opportunity to lead laps. You've had an opportunity to be the car chasing, uh, sitting second there, and made a couple of attempts to try to get around Jay Anderson when he was up in front of you earlier in the race. Uh, how are you liking uh, the car and your chances? I'm liking my chances pretty good. I'm hoping I can bring this home so you can get some Gatorade in your eye. And we did mention that uh, you put that 33 in victory lane Thursday, uh, so you obviously look to do the same here, but the lights are off at a pace car, so we're going to let you get back down with your team here, and uh, we'll see where your 33 ends up here moving forward. All right, appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, coming out tonight. we got a really, really strong field, so uh, a lot of talent in this field, so this will be fun to watch, I'm sure. That is Travis Brown, who rides in position number four and he looks forward to a Gatorade bath if he can get to victory lane here tonight he sits in the best possible position we're going to come to the restart to take lap number 74 that'll be two laps shy of the halfway point in tonight's affair as we close in on about an hour of racing being knocked off so far 52 minutes in the work since the field rolled off of the grid and we're getting set to go here. The 33 is going to be the control car. He left right away. Does he do it again? Pace car to pit road. The 33 of Travis Brown rates about one, two seconds. Now he's on the gas. The green flag flies. We're racing once again. The battle for second is going to be overtaken. It looks like the 14 of Scott Brinson is going to lose one spot. Robert O'Neill going to be coming up from third. And he'll actually slide up into position number two. Now down the back straight away. A, a big run for the 14 of Brinson. And uh, Brinson goes to the outside lane. We hear a couple cars got checked up at a restart. And already, the, again, it's going to be the top four that uh, have a little bit of an advantage. So a big checkup back in the pack. An update. Jim Smith is back on the lead lap. So he rides in 11th. And Michael Johnson is uh is gonna lose a lap he brought his 11 down pit road and uh began to catch back into the field actually got in a wreck uh michael johnson drove right into the back of uh, what, what's showing on our screen to be jim smith there was a big checkup on that restart jim smith actually gets wrecked from it michael johnson loses the whole front wing of his car so that's going to uh, take a couple of those cars off pace. Jim Smith has lost another lap. Uh, so he came down for service. So he had the battle back from two laps down. Just got his lead lap back. It ends up getting wrecked uh, for Michael Johnson, who was trying to catch up to the field. A big checkup back there in the pack caused that contact. And uh, he's going to fall once again right back to being one lap down. So Michael Johnson, Jim Smith, one lap down. That leaves Ryan Eckstein as the last car on the lead lap and everybody within 2.6 seconds of each other but once again the top draft group is going to be four cars led by the 33 of travis brown who we just spoke to under that caution flag scott brinson has dropped back to third the 32 of ryan borges back up in a mix again that 32 is one of those cars in that top four draft at the start of tonight's race uh, but evidently dropped back after catching the fence there at a corner number two drop back made a green flag pit stop caution flew and he's been able to pick his way through the field as like in that opening green flag run 40 laps that second one about 30 laps and uh, again that pretty much puts all of these drivers on what's going to be a one more stop race to the finish it'll be coming up somewhere in around lap 110 or so i uh, would split that in half but cautions could dictate or change that Top four single file right now as they run Borges second, Brinson third, O'Neill in fourth. You see Borges really likes that outside wall. The 32 gets right up to that high side. The four of Matt Burkhart reporting that the car pushing a little bit through the corner there. He's currently drafting off of Jay Anderson. Jay Anderson for the second time in a row having a really fast car when we saw him up in the front of the field is going to be the first car in line on the field 
uh, that is not in that lead draft. He once again leads the charge in the second pack, which is 1.1 second back. As they sit right now, Brinson takes another swing at Travis Brown down that front straightaway. But again, Jay Anderson to 18, class of the field in that opening run, but got cycled back to the field. And again, the last two restarts, uh, just the way it all shakes out. And it, it, interesting enough to note, uh, if you count the, the drop of the initial green flag and the two restarts that we have now seen, the top four cars, every time I've been able to pull away and put time on the rest of the field. So two times in a row, Jay Anderson finds himself in fifth, one position short. And again, always is finding himself leading that secondary charge of cars. A little bit of a challenge. The 14 of Brinson is way up to the fence. This is for the lead. Again, uh, he slides back down in line. Travis Brown again just oh, so solid. On uh, that bottom blade. And it's because the way the draft works in these machines. And we double checked with that confirmed that we spoke to him there under the yellow. And, and it is the case that you just got to kind of ride that bottom. And uh, it make it hard and as hard as possible for your opponents to try to put that pass on you. Jim Smith up against the fence here, already sitting two laps down after regaining his lead lap. He will drop to three laps down, so just not his night. The number 12 having some bad luck so far. And so the halfway point has been well crossed. Travis Brown works lap 83 of 150. And Brinson is in tow of the 10 cars that are on the lead lap. But that uh, that secondary draft led by Jay Anderson is there. And uh, with a little bit of assistance from the draft of Jim Smith's machine, they have been able to catch our leaders. And uh, we saw this last time, however, where they were able to get up to our leaders and Time to stall out. And uh, I think it was uh, Matt Burkhart who uh, helped actually Ryan Eckstein get up to the top four. But once Eckstein caught the draft of those leaders, uh, Matt Burkhart was left uh, with nothing. So uh, Burkhart actually trouble for him in the four car in the fence. Uh, Matt Burkhart through corner number two got a little bit of help from the 07 of Matt Clifton has got back going but the left side and uh, we'll try to get it up for you there the left side of the number four of Matt Burkhart's machine severely torn up a tough break uh, for him again just talking about the uh, the rough catch that he had earlier in tonight's race where uh, he helped his uh, partner get up almost something that, like you'll see with the stock car at, uh, at a plate track NASCAR style racing where you'll see that guy he'll help you get back up into that position and then uh, you'll push him all the way up he'll drop down to the bottom line and leave you almost the same situation for Burke Hardy helped Eckstein up there Eckstein caught the draft of the the leaders and set sail and now Matt Clifton making contact with Burke Hart and that number four is torn up and has not come down pit road yet but is uh, severely off pace and Taking the cone with him. So uh, these drivers going to be at a little bit of a confusion as far as where they are going to need to slow down for uh, for pace speed because uh, the cone is being pushed around the racetrack by the driver of the Ford. That's Matt and Burkhart continuing to take the cone uh, for a little bit of a ride. That probably a little bit more exciting than the two-seater that we spoke with earlier, Mario Andretti. On that is, you'll see if you watch any car broadcast in real life, contact for the number one spot. As uh, Scott Brinson, again, trying to work that draft as close as possible, got to the right rear. To immediately apologize. You know, for the radio. contact for third. Ryan Borges up into Jay Anderson. And again, we told you Jay Anderson was fast. Once he caught this lead draft, which has been extended to seven cars, the base we've seen it all night long. Line. And finds himself in third and closing in quickly on the battle between Brinson and Brown, which is the top two. 
on the racetrack. Lap 89 now in the works as uh, Travis Brown, 33 car, leading the most laps so far. Jay Anderson also up there. The second most laps have been led by the number 18. And uh, it's going to be Ryan Borges putting on that pass. So Borges going to move up to third. Anderson back to fourth. As they run, uh, Brian Cross continues to try to get a couple laps back. He got about three back on those last handful of cautions. So Brian Cross is number 70, still 41 laps down. Burles, uh Falcons is uh, disconnected. He has recently reconnected to the server, but he is 30 laps down. So if he doesn't join back soon, Brian Cross is uh, going to be able to put the pass on him for that spot. But uh, this big lead lap uh, draft, all these leaders so close together. A great sight to see, but this is also where you can step to the outside on somebody and somebody's going to be making a safe move right next to you and how you end up in the fence. And when you crash with another car and these, uh, these DW12s, it's not going to be pretty. And especially at the speeds that they are running right now. Gary Bauer, a little bit of a close call. Nearly, uh, nearly came up on the 77 of Robert O'Neill. But again, they fan out two, three wide. And uh, again, you see everybody go up to the fence. Brinson up to the wall, Borges up to the wall. They try to use the draft off of that lap machine up against the wall. Brian Cross tried to use that draft to get around Travis Brown. Oh, Brinson way up the hill. And nearly Ryan Borges it into the wall to get way out of the gas and again that was nearly an exact copy of what we saw happen to the 32 of Borges earlier so Borges again has actually got back up the second so he rides trailing the 33 of Travis Brown but again it is a, a very fluent now eight car pack up at the front of these fields so these drivers getting put down some of the fastest lap times all night long, Travis Brown putting down his second fastest lap all race last time by. Um, again, these guys, I haven't yet seen anybody break the uh, the 32 second barrier. And actually, Scott Brins Brinson actually did it uh, two laps ago or in practice session, but... Again, these guys running super fast and down into the 31 nines, a 31 7 for Scott Brinson. That last time working the draft, 31 7, referring to the amount of time it took them to get around the racetrack, their lap time in seconds, 31.7 seconds. Top four trying to separate this group into two sets of four because. Fifth place has actually dropped to one second off. So, top three actually. And uh, that lap car, Brian Cross making it a four car group up front. But Matt Clifton, Jay Anderson, Robert O'Neill, Gary Bauer, Kerry Cleaver actually all lost 1.1 seconds to our leaders once again. So, as quickly as that big pack formed, it kind of disperses just as easily. But again, that 33 of Travis Brown now can call the dominant car, which really makes a testament to how important these restarts are, uh, considering the fact that once you get out front, this racetrack, and it is very easy to pass for position 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way through 14. You can pass for that at any given point, the way this draft is. But passing for that number one position without any help is nearly impossible. Ryan Borges is actually going to lead the lap as uh, he stepped out to the outside, but once again through one and two, Travis Brown going to once again retake that lead on the bottom. Uh, but Ryan Borges was able to steal that lap by three one thousands, and now slides back down tightly in line as uh, these top three set and sail one point four seconds on. Uh, Fourth place, Jay Anderson and back. So again, Jay Anderson continues to just find himself in unlucky positions because uh, 
He now leads that second pack of cars like he did earlier in the race. But uh, at one point, he was actually up to position three and battling for second. But just so happens that when that second pack started to lose the momentum and everybody kind of got spread out, they had to kind of calm down a little bit because things got pretty crazy there uh, when we got up to seven cars. But uh, once, once that did happen, he was able to... Uh, or he was unable, I guess you should say, to stay with that lead draft of cars and ended up dropping back through the field. Rinse into the outside once again. Borges in third. So just really swips on, I mean, just trading spots for that number two position. And uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of discussion between uh, Robert O'Neill and Jay Anderson, the 77 of Robert O'Neill, uh, passing the 18 of Jay Anderson on the apron, attempting to do so. Anderson uh, made a little bit of a cut to the left to try to say no thank you to that. Now everybody's got to slow it down. As back under the yellow flag conditions here. And that uh, is going to be because of contact between Gary Bauer and Jim Smith. So Gary Bauer was riding the lead lap and something happened, some sort of uh, some problem on the 27 of Gary Bauer. Sounded like he, uh, something happened to the 27 of Gary Bauer. He's going to end up flipping in one and two, but... Just lost all his speed and tried to go high to uh, to avoid those cars going low. And Jim Smith tried to go high to avoid the slow Gary Bauer. And uh, those two cars hit together in the corner. Bauer taking his toe back to pit road. Leaders down for a pit stop with 50 laps to go. Got to think, can they stretch that fuel? Going to go green maybe with 48, 47 to go. And they save fuel if we don't see any more cautions. Does this turn into a fuel strategy race? But definitely expect for these cars to go up and take four fresh Firestone tires and race fuel. Travis Brown leads him down. And these pit stops normally take anywhere from five to six seconds only. The Travis Brown with the competitor and it's going to be Ryan Borges. With a blistering stomp and the car up on the jack just very temporarily. And uh, definitely four tires, but that's what paying due dividends is for qualifying on Paul Ryan Borges. Takes four tires. He will go to the lead and evidently put him in the catbird seat as Travis Brown, after leading us to the past two restarts, as Brought us all the way through that entire green flag run following such. Now that Borges is going to be there. And this thing actually put Travis Brown at a disadvantage because Travis Brown was able to beat Scott Brinson out of pit road. Brinson, I actually thought, was going to be the car that was going to challenge for that. Brinson went to the high side of Travis Brown, but Travis was able to get up to speed just in time. Um, just in time to be able to hang on to the spot, but due to the fact that Ryan Borch is actually going to beat him out of pit road. That, that means that that's going to make Travis Brown be starting on the outside of row number one. Brinson may actually have a better position than Brown because he'll be on the inside of row number two starting in third, which at least two out of the three times tonight on restarts has been able to overtake that number two spot from that car that, again, is forced to start up the hill. We'll all have to see. And now just to add on to it, a little bit of a fuel twist in the mix as the 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 longest that you've seen these guys go. And once again, for the guy like Ryan Borges, who is currently leading this race, last pitted on lap 71. So it went about 29 laps on that cycle. But first time he came down pit road under green flag conditions was um as we cycle through he came down on lap 34 
And they're going to have anywhere in the range of, again, 48, maybe 47 laps to go. Uh, depending on if we do see the lights go off on the pace car this time by. But if we do so, uh, that's going to be a long way on one tank of fuel. And uh, it sounds on board with the 32 of Ryan Borges that he may be riding in a, uh, maybe riding in fourth gear. Trying to uh, conserve fuel. The fourth gear going to use less fuel than running in first or second under the caution flag. And uh, if we see another caution, a caution or two, um, that may give them the extra little bit of pacing that they will need to be able to make that on distance. But um, again, that's all up in the air at uh, at this point and the way and the way these trends have gone the longest uh, green flag cycle that we've seen was the opening one and um, Barry Cleaver is um, being waved around the pace car on my scoring uh, appears to already be on the lead lap so we will have to see how that cycles up but the lights off the pace car we're going to go back green to take lap 104 and as we were saying the longest green flag run all night long was that uh, that 40 lap opening stretch and it's going to be more than 40 to go so by history uh, it, it, it is showing that we are going to see at least one more caution and and Kerry Cleaver, and, and my scoring going to be correct, uh, was already on the lead lap. He was actually the tail end of the lead lap. And um, he has been waved around one too many times. So, understanding my confusion there, Kerry Cleaver on my screen was being shown in position number seven. Now he's being shown as the leader. So, I think he got waved around one too many laps. We are going to have to see what happens, but Ryan Borges is a control car. He's being scored second, but getting ready now, the caution is being thrown by race officials. And uh, they are directing that 45. The 45 of Harry Cleaver to um, come down pit road. To uh, give up his uh, lap. Oh, so miscommunication between the 45 camp and um, race officials. But again, Kerry Cleaver being shown at the in the number one spot. Nobody else a lap down. Similar to a situation where everybody would get a wave around. They currently sit in front of him on the racetrack right now but technically everybody else is at the tail end of the lead lap Eckstein, Anderson, Brinson, O'Neill, Brown and Borges uh, being shown positions 2nd through 7th as opposed to being 1st through 6th like they should Kerry Cleaver should be position number 7 again the pros racing officials here you're watching again the pros IndyCar series live on the pros racing network Check out online again. Be able to pay fifteen dollar fee. Hop in here every other Sunday night with the IndyCar series, and every other Sunday night as well with the trucks on a staggered weekend. Fifteen dollar entry fee, and every spot in the field going to be paid back. So that is going to be www.pros-league.com. All the information on there, and some of the people that make things happen here. Yeah, the Pros Racing Network. People that help us get on the air. But again, it is the California 300 at Auto Club Speedway. And uh, 300 after 150 laps is complete. So we passed 200 miles in the bag. Sim Garage, some of the people that make things happen for us. Bones Racing, Mrs. Dockside, Bark Competition Carding, to name a few. Well, that... Uh, 
make it happen. Pros is also on Facebook, facebook.com slash pros racing. Search like the page and stay up to date on everything that is going around. Obviously, on Twitch, YouTube, streams being broadcast on youtube.com slash pros league TV. Uh, they have set Kerry Cleaver down to pit road. The caution has once again been thrown. So, turns out the the 45 of Kerry Cleaver uh, on on his end of um, on his end of the thing was told that he was one lap down, and uh, told race officials without going around one more time, having scoring cycle through incorrectly, he notified them that he was one lap down. So. Race officials trying to make sure everybody gets a fair shot at this thing. Gives that 45 car a wave around here before the restart evidently gets stuck a lap ahead. So, Gary Cleaver is down on pit road. The end tonight, currently working under our fourth caution. All the drivers want to know if they are allowed to pit because trying to stretch that fuel. Uh, it would be pretty difficult. If they can come in and top off now, they're pretty much set. But uh, race officials are letting all the drivers know that they are not allowed to pit. But this is a lot more helpful to them than if they were running green flag because this is giving them a little bit of assistance on that fuel strategy-wise. And a lot of these guys going to be riding around in high gear. Robert O'Neill riding around in what sounds like first or second. Brian Borges, Travis Brown appear to be riding in a, in a high gear, which uses less fuel under the uh, the caution flag. But we are getting set to go back green. Everything has been resolved. Ryan Borges and the the ticker right now is going to be displaying that Kerry Cleaver is still the leader, but he stopped in his stall, which was past the start finish line. So. That scoring has not cycled back through, but Ryan Borges is going to be going back to the point. Travis Brown in second. So we talked about how important it is to get that number one spot, especially coming right off of a restart. Because that guy down there in the number one spot can kind of ride his own race down there on the bottom. And we have not seen somebody be able to complete a pass on our leader once they've got spread out now, uh, you know, Ryan Borges is still getting up to speed out of corner number two. Travis Brown might be able to do something with him. But uh, it definitely does appear that uh, this is going to be in Ryan Borges' hands as it sits right now. So lights are off on the Ford first Mustang pace car. Field rounds corner number four and get set to go back. Green flag racing pace car down to pit road. Ryan Borges... A little bit of a fake out there, continues to pace at 65. Now he's on the gas. The green flag flies once again, that time by the stripe. Going to be 44 laps to go. Travis Brown is able to hang on to second. He has Scott Brinson on his gearbox down the back. This is where Travis Brown's going to have to make the pass if he can do it. Ryan Borges just leaves that bottom open. Travis Bound down to the inside. He brings Scott Brinson with him. Now Borges will pull back down in line third. Down the front stretch. Brinson to the outside. Travis Brown going to still have it at the stripe. But now you start to get to the point. And interesting to see that Ryan Borges ran a lane up to allow that bottom lane to be open for uh, Travis there. As of those guys working in a, yeah, a team-like style combination, both of them in, in a team per se, but this lead draft is the second biggest one we've seen all race, but they are all within five tenths of each other. Six cars, three up top, three down low. Travis Brown, no, oh, and that got a close. Got Princeton, and now Jay Anderson to the outside. Things are getting real dicey for second and third. Borges has it. Jay Anderson wants it side by side down the back. Travis Brown up and down the back straightaway trying to break the draft. 
Robert O'Neill nearly making contact with 14 of Brinson. One car off pace. Ryan Eckstein. And he uh, caught the fence. 15 went into the wall there. He is slow and now down pit road. So all six lead lap cars and actually Kerry Cleaver is going to drop off 2.1 second. But this lead draft not only has our leaders but has a couple of lappers and that's when it can get real messy. Now caution flag going to fly. It's Gary Bauer. Gary Bauer in the 27 car and it was contact there in that lead draft. Looks like the 32 of Ryan Borges slides up just a little. He makes contact with the 77 and just as Robert O'Neill has to correct just a little bit, Gary Bauer actually moves down about half a lane. And uh, uh, no fault of his own, not expecting that 77 to be moving up. Gets hit in the right front instantly into the outside wall. Hard contact. The front end of his machine destroyed and not going to take the tow back to pit road. The engine still hanging on, so he's going to be able to drive around, assuming that he has a reset left. He'll be able to pick up a fresh ride. Again, three resets is the uh, the number. And faking out on pit road, Travis Brown going to come in for some insurance. Jay Anderson going to stay out. Scott Brinson going to stay out. Robert O'Neill, Ryan Borges down pit road. Kerry Cleaver stays out. Ryan Eckstein stays out. So three takers on the pit road are for sure going to be good to go at this point as uh, less than 40 laps remain. The cars that stay out are still going to have to be stretching it. What's going to be in the range of about 50 laps, but They've nearly, uh, again, 50 laps from that last time down pit road, but they've had at least seven or eight laps of that under caution. And so that was actually our shortest green flag stint of the race, but the uh, anticipation for the end of this thing and the action definitely was picking up there in those late stages. And again, once we get within 50 to go, everybody started to get a little bit crazy. And that's what ended up with a couple of those cars ended up in the fence. So we're going to have to see because if everybody remembers correctly, when we saw Jay Anderson up at the front of this field, that was at the start of the race and not a soul could pass him. Even when he was back in traffic, he was able to almost drive and put that car wherever he wanted to, he had to get up through the field and do what he had to do. Uh, when it, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how this sorts out. So, there are six cars on the lead lap. Half took fuel, half have not. And looks like uh, some lap cars now coming in for some service. Gary Power coming in. He needs a new wing on his Delara chassis machine. Matt Burkhart coming in also one lap down. Uh, Verlis Falcons. Retired from tonight's affair. Jim Smith no longer on the racetrack as well. Matt Clifton also out of the race. Out of the 14 that started it. 11 cars. Still on track. Brian Cross, who was not in the sim at the start of the race, may have had a little bit of trouble there. Connecting his 78 machine started 44 laps down. By the time he got back out on track, he sits 33 laps down right now. Trying to get... Uh, Whatever he can out of it. Matt Burkhart, Gary Barrel. Could be getting some wave arounds here under the caution flying to get them back up to the lead lap. As these guys all try to race it out to more than double their money with the purse for that number one spot. But again, you can see 14 cars in the field. Want to make it 15? Go to pros league.com. You can register and uh, race with these guys on Sunday nights. The Indy cars, the trucks alternating weekends and 
in a staggered format. Yeah. Maybe good hard racing. I love these DW12s are just so fun to drive. Uh, especially when you put them out here on an oval and there's so much room you can almost do anything with them. Only one exception tonight is past the leader. Uh, and again, we saw Travis Brown be able to hold on to that lead regardless of how many cars were behind him. Biggest threat to the leader is getting turned by somebody trying to side draft or moving up into somebody. But again, Jay Anderson just blew this field out of the water in that opening 40 lap stretch. And unfortunately got cycled back at the back, got shuffled back a little bit the way the caution flag flew. And uh, has been trying to get back up front. He got up the third at one point, but always seemed to be one spot short of being uh, in that lead group. However, we're going to see what that 18 can do. And if anybody can come up with some sort of strategy to be able to pass Jay Anderson. We saw Travis Brown. He was able to get around Ryan Borges. That was at a quarter number two uh, on that most recent restart. Borges left the bottom open. Travis Brown went to the bottom, completed that pass. Um, if, if you're not going to be able to make that pass at a two, and the reason they were able to do so, you're just getting up to speed. So you're going to be able to get a huge run at a two. And if you don't make something happen off of this restart, I'm not sure if, uh, if anybody's going to be able to beat Jay Anderson. Yeah, I'm sure that that 18 car is going to appreciate being back up front, but he's going to have to nail the restart. Pace car and the field cycle through corners number three and into four as the capacity crowd here at the Auto Club Speedway hosts the tonight's California 300 capacity crowd of 84,000. Rise to their feet. Pace car to pit road. Jay Anderson in control of the field slowly starts to get up to speed. Now he's on the gas. The green flag flies. And we're back racing once again. Kerry Cleaver wants the number two spot. He's to the inside of Scott Brinson for that position. Ryan Porch is going to follow him down there as well. Three wide. Travis Brown to the high side and looks to duck back in line. The 14 slides in line in front of him. A little bit of a block going to be put down. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. All up on each other's gearbox. Couple of cars off pace here. And what happens in these Indy cars? They're so fast on the accelerator that these restarts can get pretty hairy. Normally you get checked up in the back. And uh, we've seen a couple guys lose a lot of time because they do get checked up in the back of the back. As they run right now. Everybody is caught once again chasing the 18 of Jay Anderson. 35 to go that last time by the stripe as we worked down the back straight away and into corners number three and four. It's one car trying to make the outside work. It's Scott Brinson rides that middle lane through three and four, dives down back in line once they hit the front straight. The Travis Brown actually going to be able to complete that pass for the number four spot. So five cars in the lead graph. The second group of cars is going to be Gary Power, Ryan Eckstein, 6th and 7th, the 27 and the 15. They are 1.5 seconds back, and then Robert O'Neill, Matt Burkhart, from there on back, are 2 plus seconds away. Gary Cleaver trying to find a way underneath Jay Anderson. Anderson just who needs to hug that white line and we see a couple of drivers think about making a pass in between those two white lines down the back and technically speaking not a double yellow line so passing would in theory be allowed there but for the drivers and what uh, we've heard from them that race officials have said that you are not allowed to make a pass below that white line going down that back straightaway A lot of shuffling in this pack. Ryan Borges to fourth. As Travis Brown has dropped back to fifth. Borges and Brown have been flopping out a little bit. Travis Brown really hasn't gotten into a rhythm since the uh, the drop of the green flag. He needs to calm down a little bit in the 33 car. 
uh, you know, drive his race a little bit. Everybody else is kind of single filed out. I know that Gary Bauer and Ryan Eckstein, sixth and seventh, are not far behind. They can see everything that's going on up front. They're only about seven tenths back from Travis Brown, who rounds out that top draft of five cars. The question is, can they make something out of it? Ryan Borges side by side with Gary Cleavers, number 45. Borges to third. Travis Brown to the inside to fourth. And Cleavers going to drop back to fifth. 30 laps to go that time by the stripe. Travis Brown overdrives it a little bit. But by doing so, he's actually going to get passed by Gary Bauer. Brian Eckstein also going to go on by. So Travis Brown's going to drop back to position number seven. So uh, we're hearing that 33 of Travis Brown has damage to. Is the front wing here and he has nose damage taking a immediate look from the closest camera that I can get don't see any uh, structural damage with the uh, cosmetic portion of that front wing uh, but he has definitely dropped back in a hurry now 1.8 seconds out of it the 33 who entered tonight one of the favorites to take it all home after winning the qualifier race on Thursday And he has dropped back to 7th. Brian Eckstein, Gary Bauer were nearly up with that lead draft. And now once again dropped to 1.5 seconds back. Kerry Cleaver is in the middle of it. Uh, but he is 7 tenths back from Ryan Borges. So it has now become a top 3 pack. The top 3 try to drive away. But again, still led by... Jay Anderson. It's very easy with a track that is this wide for if you're that 18 of Jay Anderson uh, to uh, to just slide up a little bit, open up that lane, and if those guys have it timed and they're on their toes and they're up on that wheel, they can easily slot in line behind you. But Anderson, uh, his objective is to keep those left side tires either on or below that white line. So uh, he would be unable, and the other drivers would un be unable to get to his inside. So he's going to make you, and he's going to force you to try to make that pass on the outside. Not something easy to do in uh, these Delara DW12 chassis. And Brinson making it side by side once again, and is red and white the Marlboro number 14 manufacturer apparently Ferrari on, uh, on that car interesting enough to know he is looking and searching for a way to get to the bottom a way to get around Jay Anderson and 14 has been one of the more aggressive drivers that is not afraid to continuously look to the high side can't get it done get back in line look to the high side again can't get it done and get back in line not content with riding in place he is right now saying tucked up on the gearbox you see he steps out one lane up tries to use a little bit of side draft but side draft in these cars not as prevalent as it is in a uh, nascar stock car these guys just all tow there try to work that tow and get the draft off the gearbox of those cars in front of him brinson once again to the high side if you're working that top you may be able to steal that checkered flag we, we'd seen situations where Ryan Borges I was sitting in second. You had Travis Brown in first, and Borges was able to actually lead the lap at the stripe. Uh, but evidently, uh, Travis Brown was able to just hang on to that spot once he went through uh, corners number one and two. But that could be something that you got to think of also. If you're Ryan Borges, you're Scott Brinson. You can't only be thinking of you need to find a way around the 18. You also need to have a little gamesmanship between each other and try to time your moves as we're well under 25 laps to go. You get to time your moves to the fact that do you want to be second going through three and four, use that draft and try to get up there? Do you want to be sitting third and try to draft down this front straightaway? Do you have enough time? 
So if you're Borges and Brinson, these are the laps right here where you're not going to let the other guy know, but you got to be thinking in the back of your head, all right, back off a little bit. How quickly can I draft up to him? How close do I need to be to him in three and four to get the draft that I'm going to need to step out of line? This is time to experiment. But like always in the great sport of auto racing, cautions are never, can never be ruled out until that white flag is in the air. And that's the next flag that Jay Anderson is going to be racing to. 21 laps to go. Gary Power lets Kerry Cleaver go on by. That's for position number four. Those two cars going to perform a uh, plate track style swap as uh, they are trying to figure out some sort of strategy. Ryan Eckstein volunteering to actually get up on the gearbox and push Gary Power. Trying to find some way to eliminate what has become a 1.6 second gap between our leaders and positions fourth on back. Three wide. For that spot, Travis Brown to the bottom and Ryan Eckstein goes backwards through the middle. Down that front straightaway, that's going to be broken up rather quickly but uh, at this point and that three ride really killed those guys 1.7 plus seconds I mean Kerry Cleaver who has scored fourth and our leaders oh contact hard into the wall Kerry Cleaver Travis Brown a huge wreck down the front straight away caution gonna fly and that's gonna set us up for what's going to be a 15 lap shootout and that all happens with Travis Brown using the side draft and a little bit of net code they actually drive a little bit through each other's cars Travis Brown ends up in the fence and uh, we told you that when you um, you make an Iraq, you get into the fence, and he's EW12. It is not pretty. Gary Cleaver up in the air and uh, spinning on his lid. He ended up on the uh, the front straightaway grass, stranded on his lid. He is forced to take a tow. Brian Cross spun around and drove away. Gary Bauer drove it away. Travis Brown stuck on his lid after uh, again making hard contact with the outside wall up and over multiple times actually got stuck on his lid and he's taken a toe back to uh, to pit road so a lot of cars down pit road for repairs our leaders actually Ryan Borges comes down pit road for a uh, splash and go of fuel. So fuel still could possibly be a, a question, a situation in the race over. We have seen um, at least uh, well over 10 laps and the range about three cautions since the last time they pitted. Now they pitted on the first of that three, but essentially three cautions worth of laps have been put in under yellow flag conditions on this final tank of fuel. Uh, where they're looking to maybe stretch in an extra six laps. 50 laps or so was the gap. It would have been about 48 if they went green on schedule. A little bit of confusion with a couple cars getting put one lap too far ahead. Race control had to take a couple laps to deal with that. So our leaders were able to ride around in a high gear, save a little bit of fuel, and save it in that regard. But Ryan Borges uh, opted to come down and top off. A couple of these drivers trying to buy for a wave around. Travis Brown, Kerry Cleaver looking to get a wave by. Gary Bauer is out of tonight's affair. He is disconnected from the sim. Uh, Kerry Cleaver and Travis Brown have gotten their fresh race cars. And Travis Brown was working a little bit of damage on the front nose of his car. And uh, he's going to get a wave around. Expect the 45 of Kerry Cleaver to get one as well. Uh, Michael Johnson is nine laps down. Brian Cross, Matt Clifton, 32 laps down. 35 laps down is Jim Smith. 74 laps down is Verlis Falcon. So Kerry Cleaver's going to get his wave around. Travis Brown's going to get his wave around as well. 
Now we hear that that may have been the last reset for the 33 crew. So that is going to set us up for a nine car field, nine cars. Going to realistically have a shot at this thing. But Jay Anderson will be the control car. Possibly going to be 15 laps. We get the green, it's all going to depend on what happens to the lights on the pace car. This next time through. Night grows old here in Fontana, California. Again, Auto Club Speedway, playing host to tonight's California 300, the series opener, the series debut here with the Pros Indy Car Series, live on Pros League TV. Again, my name, uh, Evan Pasoko, up in your broadcast booth. Pros also working the Truck Series, alternating Sunday nights. Again, if anybody interested to check them out, pros-league.com, P-R-O-S, Pros Professional Racing Online Series. Check them out also, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Some of the people that make things happen again here. Bart Competition Karting. Bones Racing. This is Doc Side over on the truck side of things. RPM. A couple of the people that make it happen. Sim Garage also. A lot of great drivers here. And we spoke to Travis Brown, our in-race reporter, on one of our earlier cautions here in tonight's race. And spoke to him on... The field, and, and even with a small amount of cars, 14 starting, only nine of them have survived to make it to this point in the race. Did make a point of making it clear that uh, the competition, there's a lot of fast guys, but Jay Anderson out front, nobody's been able to pass him. You don't need to pass him, you just need to have a nose over him at that start finish line, which we have seen been done when you're coming to that checkered flag. Does this thing go caution free to the end? What happened last time? We grouped everybody up. We'll just answer it with that question. So, nine cars. And actually, scoring an update through going to be eight as Gary Bauer has again disconnected. He has taken his car behind the wall. His night is done. Going to be eight cars in contention for this one. It's going to be a 15 lap to go restart. I'm going to write it down how they look. The front row could be the 18 of Jay Anderson alongside the 14 of Scott Brinson. Ryan Eckstein going to be the 15 car in third inside that second row. Alongside him going to be Robert O'Neill. Ryan Borges is going to have the 32 in fifth. And pace car down pit road. Jay Anderson in control. He hesitates one, two seconds. Green flag flies and racing once again. Single file for the top two side by side for third. It is going to be Ryan Eckstein down on that bottom. Robert O'Neill up on the high side trying to make that work and arc that corner. Jay Anderson opens up about a six, eight car length lead down the back. This is the big run for Scott Brinson. He's not going to catch him till the corner though. This is the most momentum he's going to get. Can he get the pass done to the outside? Oh no, Jay Anderson around. Jay Anderson from the number one spot is going to get turned around by it looked like by the 14. Jay Anderson through the corner is going to get wow the 14 of Scott Brinson just gets up to the bumper and I'm looking very very slowly and it does appear that there there was a very slight contact Oh, and now caution. Big trouble on the track. And a couple cars around down that front straightaway. Jay Anderson is slow. He's actually still in the grass from that first incident where he got turned from the number one spot. But back under caution we go. And Jay Anderson is one lap down. So we've talked these last 30 or so laps since he got back to the point that Jay Anderson is the class of the field when he can get up front. 
But uh, again, and I'm continuing to try to look over that video, and I'm trying to get a, a very good look at it myself on if there was contact between Scott Brinson in the 14 car and Jay Anderson. Again, Jay Anderson leading out of the corner. And um, looks like, I mean, it does appear that there was caution, or, or contact, rather, uh, but I can't really get a, a clear shot of uh, if there was or not. Caution flag was for... Uh, caution was thrown for Jay Anderson, who was stopped in the uh, in that front straightaway grass. And I'm taking a look at it on board with uh, Scott Brinson there. And I don't see contact. Now, that car definitely went around, and apparently Jay Anderson reporting that he was given a 2X for car contact. The car definitely acted as if there was. Uh, but we are we're trying to see if they actually made contact. And from what I can see, and my untrained eye, you could say, um, I see about a foot a couple inches at least in between those two so looks like it is a net code a little bit of prediction code there where the the iRacing sim making that um, the, the area of that race car and trying to predict what's going to happen did a little bit too much so no actual contact but definitely turned him like there was Jay Anderson spins down and Looks like he actually uh, was able to avoid that pit road wall. Again, the pit road entrance, that wall there, uh, is just a flat one. No uh, no give there, similar to Indianapolis. And uh, he was able to avoid it. He spun it around a couple times, and front end actually went in the fence. But Jay Anderson currently rides around one lap down. He gets a wave by. So he's going to be put in eighth, and he is not going to be happy, you can imagine. Uh, after getting turned from the number one spot and really at that point it was his race to lose because again we, we hadn't seen anybody really be able to put that pass uh, on a, we've seen people be able to beat our leader to the stripe but we haven't seen them be able to complete the pass now that's two different very stories we have seen and again we take it back to the incident where we saw Ryan Borges beat Travis Brown to the stripe that's all you need to do to get the checkered flag. You can be a guy like Jay Anderson. You can be a uh, Travis Brown who have led double-digit laps here tonight. You only need to win one of them, lead one lap to get that checkered flag. And this restart is going to be within 10 laps to go. It'll actually be at just under 10 to go, uh, which leaves us a little bit of a buffer. For one more caution to set us up for a restart. Now, caution flag flies with four or less laps to go. It's going to end at that point. Uh, with that being said, you're going to be wanting to race to the white flag if you're the leader. Now, I did say that, and don't want to put a jinx on it, but we did say that the only concern that our leader really may have is getting turned. And unfortunately enough for Jay, that is what happened at a corner number four there not too long ago so uh, going to be interesting to see if Jay can put together a charge going to have to see he's going to be starting from 8th you have to think that everybody's good on fuel we saw Ryan Borges come in and pop off but um, I mean with the amount of cautions and when we went back green with 50 to go I said the longest green flag run we've seen was 40 laps and that was that first stage and since that point the increments between cautions have gotten smaller and smaller and that's what you come to expect the laps start to wind down people start to get a little bit more brave and try to do a little bit more than maybe they should but they are racing for again the, uh, a payout where they can double and walk away with more than twice the amount of money that they entered that they had to pay the entry fee for tonight's race but it is the, the F1 style, or the F1-based paint scheme on that DW12, the 
Ferrari Marlboro machine up front of Scott Brinson. This guy's had to work hard all race long. And we talked about it. He has not been afraid to step out of line and go up to the high side, try to make it work and not really be content to lie if he would dive back down and step right back out once again. So we are going to see the lights are off on the pace car. It is going to be nine to go. Can Scott Brinson hang on? Does Ryan Borges have anything for him? Does Robert O'Neill have any tricks up the sleeve as the field rounds three and four? The Ford First iRacing Mustang pace car. Get set to dive down to the pit road. L sharp left hand turn complete. Brinson on the gas nearly immediately. The green flag flies and nine laps remain. Robert O'Neill hangs on to second. Ryan Borges slides in line to third. Ryan Eckstein fourth. That's going to be, again, the top four seem to be the cars that are able to get the best three start. And it has been that way all night long. Just the magic number. Robert O'Neill working this big, fast draft down the back straightaway, trying to get that toe off the 14 of Scott Brinson. Through now, corner number three. Can he use this speed to complete the pass? No. He's going to back out of it. And he's going to stay in line for the time being. He looks high. He opens up the door. Borges looks to the inside. Can't get it done. Ryan Eckstein to the outside. He wants third. Matt, Bo Matt Burkhart, rather, back up into the picture as well. He has Travis Brown with him. But Kerry Cleaver and Jay Anderson are over a second out of this thing. They need a caution if they want to get another shot because they did not get the restart that they needed to be competitive. Brinson still leaves O'Neill. Rides that gearbox through three and four. A lot of shuffling for position. Travis Brown in position number five to the high side to the bottom. Back up top, then back down low. Trying to find a way by this big single file line that he finds in front of him. And nobody wants to step out of line because if they do so and they don't get anybody else out there to help them, they're going to drop to the back. So essentially they're playing a game of chicken with each other. Borges looks high, dives back down low. He's in third. Scott Brinson rounds corner number four. Six laps to go, this time by the strike. O'Neill looks at a high side, and it looks like that 77, unlike what we would have seen these guys do in a middle portion of the race, where... They'd use that draft to get up side by side with the leader and lose it, maybe drop back in second or shuffle back to third, do it once again. It looks like Robert O'Neill wants to have that number two spot to try to use that draft out of the final corner of this race. He wants that position, and he's hanging on to second, letting off the gas, staying in line, trying to hang on to it. Borges thinks about going high, five to go. So it is nearly 290 miles complete in tonight's 300 lap affair. We're down to the final five laps. If a caution flies at this point, the race will most likely end under yellow flag conditions. O'Neill continuing to try to hang on to second. Slides up a little bit. Borges to the bottom. He got it. Side by side for second. And he's squeezing Ryan Borges down there. Borges, two left side tires in the grass. He picked up the cone. Now the cone is on that front wing of Ryan Borges. That might slow him down a little bit. And it is. At a corner number two, Ryan Borges trying to shake that pit road cone that he's picked up on the nose. And it's slowing him down. Robert O'Neill's able to get back to second. Wow, Borges trying to shake that cone loose. And just something that happens with the iRacing sim. He can't get rid of it. Now it's gone, but he's back to fourth. Eckstein up to third. But that was the move that he needed to get to second because right there at a four, that white line becomes a dashed white line, hash marks. And he was able to get down to the bottom, but he picked up that pit road cone, cut it down a little bit too low, was forced nearly to the grass. And now race leader. Got Brinson with a pit road cone stuck on his nose. That's going to slow him down a little bit. And not sure if that shows up on the broadcast, that cone now gone, but that pit road exit cone is right there on that apron that these guys are using at some points in the race. 
and uh, it can slow you down. Robert O'Neill to the high side. Next time by is one lap to go. Do they make it to the white flag as there's some side-by-side -side back in the pack? Brinson with the lead. Oh, nearly contact. O'Neill into the right rear. White flag in the air. Two more miles to the checkered flag. Now O'Neill has set it up and down the back straightaway for the final time at a corner number two. Two car lengths down to one and a half. To one to half a car length to the outside. Here's the move that Robert O'Neill has to make. He cuts down for the side draft. Can he get it out of the corner? They're side to side. He has the run. Contact and door to door at a corner number four. It's a drag race to the start finish line. It is the 14 of Scott Brinson takes the California 300. Great finish as Robert O'Neill looked like he had perfectly timed that run on the outside. And a little bit of an accidental slip up or a defensive move. As uh, that 14 of Brinson slides up the hill in three and four just a little bit. Makes contact with Robert O'Neill and beats him to the stripe. It's going to be five one hundredths of a second or 56 one thousandths. Point oh five six is the distance between the top two after 300 miles. The gap is going to come down to something that is that close. So we're going to try to talk to some of our top finishers. Ryan Eckstein, the 15 machine, is going to be able to walk away with the number three spot. And we now have him on the radio, Ryan Eckstein. It's Evan Pasoko in the Pros League TV booth. You got a copy? I do. That was a long one. It was a fun one. 150 laps is in the books. You come home in third place, just a little bit short of being able to be with those guys, the top two, to battle it out for the win. Walk us through that final restart there. Uh, well, I just tried to keep the draft on the restart, and luckily I did. And just tried to hang in there and not wreck anybody and get the win, but them guys, I couldn't get up there, so it was a good race. Qualified in the number six position, so we're able to run that Thursday night qualifier. Uh, didn't really get time down in practice. How did you like the setup, and I mean, how confident were you entering the race? Well, I actually, I never raced this track with the car before, so I had to learn quickly, and luckily, it, everything, all my experience came into play and worked out for me, so. Talk us through that draft, and we saw. People who were able to swap position number two, if you were running second and third or back in the pack, you were able to trade out that spot very easily. But it seemed like that leader, if he was running that bottom lane, it was very hard to pass him. What did you find out uh, that wise working through that draft? Yeah, it was like once you came within 20 feet, you got like a boost, you know, and then you had to, you had to either go up on the outside or you had to lift and once you hit the outside, it was like you hit that wall of air and couldn't get by him, so it was tough. A solid finish for sure, coming home in third. Thanks for uh, letting us talk to you. Before we let you go, any uh, sponsors and shout-outs that you want to throw out there? Uh, not really. Just want to thank you guys for putting this on. and I had fun out here and be back next time. And actually, that is Ryan Eckstein coming home in third place in number 15 machine. Able to walk with the top three. Again, congrats on uh, your finishing and good luck moving forward. Thank you. Now we're going to try to take a moment here to talk to our second place finisher, Robert O'Neill, who comes home in his number 77. One position short first and foremost. Robert, walk us through that final out. We knew that passing our leader was a challenge all night long. We saw that you had to try to set him up. You got side by side in the corner. Walk us through those final laps. As Robert tries to work on a little bit of uh, mic problems there, we'll try to get a word with him later. Going to try to talk with our race leader, Scott Brinson. You got a copy? Yes, sir. 
Well, walk us through that final few laps. We know that first place was pretty much able to hold his own all night long. You ride that bottom, they're able to get up next to you, but they can't complete the pass. They don't need to complete the pass to win the race. You knew that. You saw that 77 got right up to that door. It was a wild finish. 56 one hundredth of a second is the gap. Walk us through from that final restart to that checkered flag. Well, I knew once the pace car went in that uh, it was pros rules. I could go when I wanted to, and I wasn't going to wait. And me and Bobby had been close all night long, so I felt good with him being behind me. Uh, I think with three to go there, I saw Ryan make the dive underneath, and I saw them have their little battle. And I knew Bobby wasn't done yet. And when he got that big run, I had been on the outside all night long. I pretty much set up camp out there. And I could not get that run. And all of a sudden, I see him coming with that run. And, yeah, we touched wheels going down the front stretch, but that's racing. It made it exciting for everybody up here and watching the broadcast also. After 150 laps, the gap was such a small one. So, again, not only those final few laps, you started ninth place on the grid. First car to not take a time, had a solid effort in the practice session. I mean, what were your thoughts on the setup and how these cars raced? The setup is good, but the only problem with it is everybody's right on top of each other. And the outside line really doesn't have a consistent groove to it. You have to get it absolutely perfect. And with that, you know, it's kind of made for a good race. But once you got to the second place spot, it was like, all right, where do I go from here? Because you kind of hit that wall. So in that sense, I didn't like it. But uh, the car felt great as far as not qualifying. Uh, honestly, the long green runs, I was shocked. And I was so happy to see. It's going to make for a great broadcast. And it's going to be great results for feedback instead of the caution festivals that we had all week. So I was just going to kind of hang in the back because I thought there were going to be a bunch of wrecks. And then it didn't happen, so about 50 to go, I was like, well, it's time to put the boogie on and get going, because I don't like to wait too long. I like to get up there, and it just felt like all night I was trying to pass the leader and couldn't pass him. And I got to say, I do want to take the time to say that that's not how I wanted to get the lead. And me and Jay touched, and I don't know how much I hit him, but I did not want to get the lead that way, and I feel bad about that. Obviously, entering tonight's race, the, the first race on the schedule here with the Pro's IndyCar Series race. So, I mean, a couple guys in the field that, you know, you got to get used to how they race. How is it mixing it up with these guys? That was great. These guys, for the most part, everybody held their own tonight, which is awesome. Even some guys uh, that just bought the car and track earlier today or right before the race, even they did pretty good for not much practice and running consistent quality times. So it was awesome. You're down here in Victory Lane. Any sponsors or shout-outs you want to throw out there? I want to thank everybody in Pros League, all of them. Everybody that came out tonight, everybody that stops by for all the races, and everybody that comes in here and makes this thing tick, because without all you guys, this thing wouldn't exist. So I want to thank everybody that's part of Pros League as a whole. 10-4, well, congratulations on the victory, and good luck moving forward in the rest of the season. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. That is Scott Brinson. He's going to come home in the number one position. Able to walk away with that checkered flag. Going to give it another shot. Robert O'Neill, you got a copy? Yes, sir. You're able to walk home at second. We just talked to Scott there about that wild finish, and he said that he was the one that got stuck on that high side for the majority of the race, and he was never able to get the run. And we saw you try to set him up. You did it very successfully down that back, got door-to-door, -door, just a little bit of contact in three and four, and he was able to edge you out as you had to try to correct that. Walk us through from that final restart to that checkered flag. Yeah, Scott always drives me clean, so I try to do the same to him. It's you know It's tough when you're on the outside out there and you go into three, it's just like hitting a wall of air, and it, it's really hard. I was hoping that you know with about two to go I could kind of stay there the 15 did cut me a break at one point we kind of got shuffled around a little bit and he let me back down which helped me so once I got back down I was able to kind of just sit there and ride and try to draft up on him and I, I was just hoping if I, I could get there and maybe touch him a little bit you know touch wheels and might slow his momentum up a little bit and I'd be able to carry it through but it just didn't happen but I'm, I'm happy with second it was a really good race entering tonight's race you started in position what's going to show up to be position number nine uh i do believe there and 
your number 77 machine. I mean, how, how'd you like the car and racing at this track in specific? Oh, the car's a blast. You know, the, the track is fun. It's, you know, with, with it being a fixed setup, it, it is hard to pass. I mean, if you hold the bottom it, it, when you're the leader, it, once you get back in a pack, it, you can kind of, you can pass guys because they get held up on the bottom, so you can work the outside. But once you start working your way to the front, it, it gets harder and harder. But I, I'm looking forward to running the series and, and, you know, some other tracks like, you know, Iowa and Richmond. I, I think it ought to be fun. But, I mean, the car is a blast to drive. Moving forward to the next race, going to be at Phoenix. How confident are you there? What do you expect? I've never been on that track with this car, so we're going to need to practice. I think it ought to be a fun race. It's definitely when we get to some of these shorter tracks, it won't be wide open and there won't be so much drafting. I think it's going to be more driver. So I personally think it's going to be a little bit better. You know, But I'm happy that pros and, and you know Scott and, every, and George and everybody's putting us on. I'm having a blast. And definitely any sponsors and shout-outs you want to thank? Uh, uh, my sponsor's me, and my buddy Kerry helped put me in this race, Kerry Cleaver, you know, so we work together a lot, but uh, other than that, just myself. All right, well, congrats on the top two finish, and uh, we'll keep an eye out for you up front moving forward. Thank you. That is Robert O'Neill, driver of the 77, going to come home in second, and those are the top three drivers that... We were able to speak to, and that's pretty much going to wrap things up. Before we go, going to run you down through the full field. Scott Brinson going to be finishing in the number one position. Robert O'Neill walks home with second. Ryan Eckstein, third. Matt Burkhart in fourth. Ryan Borges in the fifth position. Kerry Cleaver, sixth. Travis Brown in seventh. The first car one lap down. The only car one lap down, actually, is Jay Anderson after leading the majority of this race, leading a lot of laps and running up front in the late stages. Comes home in 8th. Michael Johnson finishes ninth, 10 laps back. 10th place, Gary Power, 18 laps out of it. Brian Cross finishes 11th in 34 laps off the lead lap. 50 back is Matt Clifton. He gets 12th. 13th is going to go to the 12th of Jim Smith. 53 back. And Verlis Falcons had a rough night the 006. He walks away in position number 14. That's going to do it on behalf of George Bark, everybody else here at Pros Racing. My name is M. Pasoko. Thanks for tuning in on the Pros Racing Network. The California 300 is going to go to the 14 car of Scott Brinson. We'll see you next.